right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. You probably noticed that I'm in sort of a, a new environment. No big deal, as the Bob Dylan song goes. Oh, times, they are changing. Can everybody hear me okay? Is my mic close enough? I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting to my new surroundings. Um, uh, many of you may have seen on Instagram, Amber had made a, a sort of a cryptic post about uh, things and life changing. I am in a new area. Uh, just going to be, you know, like she said uh, in her post, going to be playing this one a little close to the chest. Um, going to keep the personal life a little bit more uh personal but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we can't hang out that doesn't mean that we can't be friends that doesn't mean that you can't join me here uh for my new area for my new uh vlogging so uh, you know life uh changes we all make decisions and uh and yeah so what what we learn from that as as alfred told uh told master wayne uh when we fall, we learn how to pick ourselves up again. And that's that's what we're doing. Batman, thank you for the inspiration. That's why I have you on my wall. None of you have ever seen this. This picture has always been off camera. No big deal. Things will probably change again. You never know what's going to happen. But for now, this is what you see. This is what you get. You get the same Nick. You get the same Grim Green in a crazy new environment. Really hoping that the mic is picking me up okay. Fiddling around with my new setup, it's weird, but we're gonna move into vlog land right now, and I don't actually have any vlog notes uh, ready to go at all. Uh, I've been just kind of crazy all over the place. Um, I decided to wear my CJ, Mr. Vaping Monkey. Thank you for this very warm, cozy sort of hoodie. Um, transitioning away from the stash. <laughs> I know everybody's gonna be disappointed. Back into a more... Uh, normal looking facial hair some people are really giving me shit over my mustache i have no idea why uh but i do have some things that i do want to talk about tonight uh we're going to do some first impressions i may have a review thrown in there we're definitely going to drink some beer we're definitely going to do shout outs and viewer mail we're definitely we're definitely uh doing the vlog thing so i believe this came from josh again oh shoot i can't remember who this beer came from so this is a beer that's made and brewed in Seattle. Seattle is, in my opinion, one of the greatest cities on earth. And if you're from Seattle, you should be very, very excited and very, very happy that you're from Seattle because it's a fan-freaking-tastic city. And uh, I love it. I love going there. This new this new setup is weird for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to... Uh, Good God, Lemon. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of 30 Rock. Good God, Lemon. So we're going to get into this. This is uh, from the Pike Brewery. This is a triple ale. This is called Pike Monk's Uncle. And uh, Monk's Uncle. And there is a monkey uh, drinking drinking beer. I do not advocate animals, uh, monkeys or anybody drinking uh, beer. If you shouldn't be drinking beer, you shouldn't be drinking beer, especially not monkeys, especially not any sort of other uh, land mammals beside humans. They taught that, uh, there was a, I remember there was a monkey or a gorilla not too long ago that was, uh, that was smoking cigarettes. I wonder if we could get that monkey to smoke, uh, or to vape rather. So this is Pike's Monk un Monk's Uncle. And I literally know nothing about this beer. So what I'm going to do, Pike's Monk's Uncle. That's not how you spell uncle. There's no K in uncle, you lunatic. Uh, I don't know why I typed it in like that. Um, also, just for the record, uh, monkeys are uh, are hilarious. And I think one of the funniest things on earth is... Uh, is uh, a monkey wearing human clothes. I just think that's just I think that's just hilarious. Yes. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up on Google. I'm not going to look at the beer advocate review yet before I put in my two cents about this particular beer. I'm drinking it out of uh out of one of my favorite glasses of all time. Uh Slip V, I don't know if you're watching this. Congratulations on your nuptials, but uh, I continue to use the glass you sent me. Just says fuck yeah on it. 
seems like a light beer seems like something that uh seems like something I'm gonna be into it's a uh, triple ale oh okay okay that's interesting that's interesting uh, it's very very sweet there are some very strong citrus notes in here um, like like Valencia oranges not like a grapefruit citrus but like a sweet orangey citrus it's a little hoppy it's not bitter at all it's a very clean finish I think I'm into this let's see what beer advocate has to say and of course I'll post links in the descriptions uh, to most everything. I always put the crucial links uh, regarding anything I talk about in the vlogs, whether it be beer, vapor, or otherwise. Uh, so they've rated it at an 83, which is a good... Ooh, Sheik. I'm sorry, Sheik. Which is a good beer. Um, they don't have any sort of notes on here. Let's look at the uh, top, top reviews. Uh, it says it's available in winter. There's no notes at this time. Pours a golden amber, big honey, malt, fruity nose. Yes, hints of light white bread, yeast, and a hint of whiskey. Um, yep, uh, initial flavors of citrus, hop hints of whiskey. Flavors progress to honey and Belgium fruit, candied sugar. Uh, yes, it's very, very sweet. The upfront flavor that I get from it is a very, very sweet sweet citrusy uh, honey I guess would be a good way to put it I don't pick up on the uh, I don't quite pick up on that whiskey note um, but that could happen as the beer warms up just a little bit uh, this is very cold I usually don't drink the craft beers so so cold um, I usually like them around 52 to 55 degrees which I know is a weird thing to say but that's just what I like this came right out of the refrigerator so it is a very it's very very cold but uh, it is really really good as well Pike Monk's Uncle and of course like I said I'll post a link in the description and if you're from Seattle here's what you do you just get in your car or you get in some sort of municipal transport and you go down to the Pike and you order this beer at the Pike uh, at the Pike Brewery because it's right there. You guys in Seattle, you have access to it, you know, whenever you want. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mhm. Dig. Dig the beer. Dig it. That is great. So moving forward, uh, let me just have a vape real fast. Let me just have a vape real fast. What have I been vaping? I've been vaping all sorts of crazy stuff. I have so many setups going right now. Um, what we're going to talk about in the first impressions I've been using a lot, which is the Proveri version 3, um, which is, eh, it's, uh, the jury's, the jury's still a little bit out on that Proveri version 3. I need to spend a lot more time with it. Surprisingly, I've been using my Hexome quite a bit. I've just, I have the Hexome version 1 that I got at VaporCon West, and it's been fantastic, and I've really, really enjoyed using it. Um, Got one of these as well, which we're going to talk about in the first impressions. This is the Tugboat uh, mod. Really been enjoying it. And I found a bottle of uh, Halcyon Cranchy. Halcyon Vapors Cranchy. Uh, I had never had this before. Actually, that's not true. There was a vape meet at Nevada Vapor Supply where Shelly let me try some Cranchy. And I was like, hey, that's pretty good. And then after that, I kind of just never really thought about it. And I found a random bottle while I was going through stuff and uh, I've been vaping it and it's been uh, it's been quite nice it's been uh, ooh, that is good that is hitting the spot right there the sweetness of that juice actually pairs really well with this monk's uncle beer mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good good stuff it's good stuff and I know this is a this is a big change but we're gonna we're gonna power through it together we're gonna power through this as a as a community and as friends um, I'm all disoriented there's some stuff that's still just weird and I don't know where I'm gonna place this but we are gonna do some first impressions like I said I do have some shout outs prepared uh, we're gonna do some retro vaping as well so that should be ooh, fun uh, my hand is all injured not that you care about this but I burned myself right here building an atomizer uh, 
it was on a mod and I was had my hand pardon me over the coil and it, I fired it with the mod and it just burned right to me I had to pull my hand off of the coil burned me bad and then uh, and then today I cut my finger again right there cut it cut it right open so I'm a mess I'm all disoriented one thing that I did want to talk about in the last Monday double feature that I did it was the zombie mech mod um, which I really really liked and I felt like I gave a pretty glowing review and everybody got mad because they said it was too expensive and why would you spend that much money on a mod and it's stupid and it probably only cost twenty dollars to make and everybody's just out for money and they're selling it for 180 bucks look I don't know how much it costs to run a mod business I don't know the costs involved of the raw materials and machining them and labor and overheads and insurance and taxes and I don't know how much all that costs so when I see a mod that is really really nice and that I really really like using and I see that it's only 180 bucks I go hey that's not too bad knowing what I know and using it and seeing how the switch works and seeing how everything works I could pay 180 bucks for this sure I'll support the people that made and created this mod why not everybody has vape budget hands so when I when I gush about a mod or when I don't gush about a mod, that's not me like, you know, commanding you to do the same thing. Everybody has kind of their own tastes and own opinions. And if I feel like 180 bucks for the zombie mod is reasonable, then that's for me. That's I'm not demanding that you go buy one. I'm not forcing you to go buy one. I'm not forcing anybody to buy anything ever. That's That's not my job. That's not my place. What I do is I take something like this and I use it and see how it works for me in my average day-to-day -day vaping for the way that I vape. And if it gets scratches or if it gets dented or if it's hard to adjust the switch for me, then that's what you'll hear about in the video. I've already been planning things, what I'm gonna say about this tugboat mod. Uh, I've got it with a tugboat atomizer and I'm already thinking about it. I'm already thinking about what I'm going to say in a video. Do I like the switch? Do I like the throw of it? There's no locking feature. Is that a plus or a minus? How much in the end do these things cost? Do the negatives outweigh the positives? I just evaluate things as I use them and then report the truth as I see it. And I put this disclaimer before all of my videos that my experience is not intended to be the final hammer of judgment use all the resources around you and if you decide that you want to buy a zombie mod then then that's up to you that's up to your vape budget hands i just tell you my experience with it additionally with the dark horse rda man that was a rough double feature i caught a lot of shit for both of those videos <laughs> additionally with the dark horse I just don't feel like it's a good atomizer. And people are like, oh, you used it wrong. It's not meant for single coils. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I did a bunch of builds on it. The one that happened to be on there during the video was a single coil because the airflow on the Dark Horse RDA is designed for single coil use. It just is. They gave you that option. It's like a car company saying, oh, well, there's four gears on it, but don't use the fourth gear. It's not really... It's there, but you're not really supposed to use it. Just use the first three gears. It makes no sense. I used it in dual coil mode. I used it in single coil mode. I used all these weird different airflow configurations. And yes, you can flip the ring upside down to change your airflow additionally. I fiddled around with that. I forgot to mention it in the video. And literally, I don't know, 20 people within the first 15 minutes of me uploading that video uh, said, oh, by the way, you can switch the airflow ring upside down. Um, I am not a flawless individual. I've been doing YouTube videos on vaping for six years now. Six years. That's six years worth of mods, six years worth of atomizers, six years worth of tanks. I've used everything from tiny little dripping atomizers to the KFUN version 4 to rebuildable tanks, variable wattage, variable voltage, everything in between. There was a time when I was doing videos and variable voltage didn't even exist. So yes, in my six years I've learned 
as much as I possibly can about the products that I'm talking about, and I don't feel comfortable talking about a product unless I've spent a lot of time with it. This tugboat mod uh, is only about a week old. It'll probably be eh, like three weeks before a video gets done for this, maybe longer. That's just how I roll. I need to spend time with a mod. I can't get something and then just shoot a video for it. And I'm not saying that other people do that or that other people are more comfortable doing that. That's just where I am. That's just where I stand. I stand by everything I say in the videos. I feel like the Dark Horse is a junky atomizer. I feel like it's poorly made. It feels cheap and flimsy. And if you really, really want a good cloud chasing atomizer, there are at least 10, 20, 30, 40 other options out there if you want a really good cloud chasing atomizer that I feel are far superior to the dark horse in every way. But moving forward from that, um, what I want to do is uh, what I want to do is some shout outs. Uh, I have one shout out here from a guy named Donnie, and I apologize, I'm going to be looking down at my screen here. It says, Hi Nick, I would like to start off by saying that I love your videos, and you were the one who helped me get into vaping and got me off analogs. Uh, with that being said, I would like to request a shout out. There you go. Well, thank you for the kind words there, Donnie. I'm going to burp again. It's happening. It's happening. Uh, with that being said, I would like to request a shout out to all of the servicemen and women from all branches of our military that will not be able to make it home for Christmas like my friend Zach. He is a Marine stationed in Afghanistan and it would be a small thing that could raise the spirits of the ones who won't get to see their families until 2015. Thanks for your time and Merry Christmas. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Donnie, uh, Zach, consider yourself shouted out. As far as that goes, every all of our military all of our servicemen and women who are who are doing who are doing the right thing um it's it's heartbreaking to think that there uh is a as a father in in afghanistan right now who won't uh who won't who won't be home for christmas who, who doesn't get to see his family on christmas it's kind of things that we take for granted and uh absolutely Consider yourselves shouted out. Uh, thank you for your service uh, to our country, and I hope that uh, I hope that you do get to come home and see your family uh, as soon as you possibly can in 2015. That just uh, whew, it's one of those things that you know just breaks my heart. And uh, yeah, so let's let's get to my uh, shout outs folder. I do have uh, I do have an Instagram that I want to shout out. Not that he needs it uh but um mr man over there at vape porn uh you're doing a fantastic job if you don't follow at vape porn on instagram holy crap you need to be following at vape porn on instagram all the stuff that he posts is great it's it's you it's unique mods that you don't get to see it's unique videos it's funny videos it's great pictures um i'm a big fan i got to meet him three times now three times have i met you three times anyway vape porn great instagram uh definitely you need to follow them as well i will put a link in the description to the instagram where you can uh, where you can where you can read that so this comes from don a shout out for don i am a student at itt tech in nashville tennessee for my parental project um I am talking about vaping. Your videos have helped me cut down my smoking habit. I have cut down from over a pack a day uh, to one or two cigs a day, which in my opinion is absolutely still a win. I would love to be able to put a video of a shout out of my pre in my presentation. Ah, so this is for your presentation. If you would do this for me and, a, and my group, that would be great. Uh, the group's name is Team Vapor. Once again, I would like to thank you for your great advice and I look forward to watching your videos in the future. Don. Don, Don of Nashville, Tennessee, and the uh, Team Vapor crew, consider yourselves, consider yourselves shouted out. Uh, I hope this isn't too late for your project. This is a request from October that kind of kept getting uh, bumped back and bumped back. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, I have one more shout out, I believe. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a long one. 
this is a long uh, email. Uh, I'm going to read it anyway. So it says, my name is Nicole, and I have been watching your vlogs and videos for the past two years. I've been smoke-free since then, and I've gotten my entire family to switch as well. Congratulations, Nicole. After the loss of my grandpa to stage four lung cancer, your reviews made my switch so much easier. About two months ago, I introduced my best friend to vaping in your YouTube channel. She kicked the cigarettes and was doing great. She got her mom onto vaping as well, also on your videos. Last week, we took a ride to the local vape shop and she got her first variable voltage mod. Little did I know that it was the last time I would see her. She was in a horrible car accident and left behind two little boys and friends and a family. Your videos helped me with your videos helped me and her and so many. We just want to say thank you for taking your time to help uh, in so many ways in this community. Since my friend's passing, I go and check on her mom on Mondays and Thursdays and we watch your new uploads. That is breaking my heart right now. Uh, I know you're a very busy guy, but if you would be able to give a shout out to Ashley, it would mean the world to me. Thanks again. Hope you have a great day, Nicole. Um, Absolutely, Nicole. I can't even, I'm so sorry for your loss. I can't even imagine what that would be like to lose, you know, such a good friend. Um, it sounds like that you guys were, were close and that you were sort of bonding over this vaping experience. And that's when I go to vape meets and when I meet people and, and you have that connection, you know, whether it be music or, you know, any interest, cars or music or movies or vaping. Um, it's nice. It's it's a great thing to have that common bond. So shout out to you, Nicole. Shout out to your friend Ashley. I hope you guys ha I hope you guys have a, a good holiday uh, season in spite of the tragedy that has happened. Um, absolutely. I'm, I'm not sh even sure what to say, Nicole. That is that's intense. Um, I hope. Uh, I, I'm glad that you. Uh, I'm glad that you're you're doing the right thing and being the good person and going to visit uh, visit her mom and I'm glad that you watch the videos I'm glad that you like uh, I'm glad that you like the videos that means a lot to me um, uh, so yes consider yourselves shouted out so we've talked about some beer I did a little bit of a rant we're 22 23 minutes into the video right now I think I want to talk about this it's time for some first impressions <laughs> All right, uh, so I've just been chomping at the bit to get at this first impression. So I, I, I'm a weak, I'm a weak, weak man. Um, I was hanging out uh, at uh, at Nevada Vapor Supply with uh, my good friends Chad, Nina, and Shelly, and they. They had the tugboat mod in stock. And I'm sitting there and we're vaping and we're talking about it. And I'm like eyeballing it through the through the glass case. And so I sit down and we're having beers and we're just vaping in the shop. And it's great. I mean, if there's if you have a shop locally to you, uh, just go there now and hang out. Uh, I love it. I love going to shops and hanging out. Um, but we were hanging out and having beers, and I kept eyeballing that tugboat mod. And uh, they closed up and I was like, I I told Nina and I'm like I, I need I, I need to buy a tugboat mod um, so I I plunked down the cash and I bought a tugboat mod uh, so far it's been great they have one slight annoyance with it that I know isn't going to weigh but first let me get some vapor into my lungs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's good It is good. It is good. That juice, that juice is good. Let me have a sip of beer. Mm -hmm. So, I have one annoyance with it, and I'm going to hold it up to the microphone. Kind of rattles. It just kind of rattles, and it's just because that's the way that it is. Uh, that's just the way that it's built and constructed. Um, from what I understand, this is a lot like the 4.9 mod, which I never got to try a 4.9 mod, but I understand that this is uh, is similar to the 4.9 mod in the way that it goes together. So here, let me take my atomizer off of here. I'm going to put this top cap back on because it's an interesting design. Uh, this particular tugboat is black, 
It's made out of aluminum, so it's incredibly, incredibly light. It is a hybrid design, so which means that on the top, your battery is just touching your atomizer. Atomizer touching battery, battery touching atomizer. So like I said in the zombie video, you have to use it with an atomizer that has that protruding center pin. Thankfully, I've been using it with a tugboat. Now I notice that on all the tugboats and the tugboat version two, it has that extensively long center pin. And I believe they were planning on doing a hybrid style mod, which is why they're so long. That's why they work perfect on this mod. It's a dinky little thing. And if I take off this top cap right here, you're gonna see, yep, yeah, you're gonna see the battery pop up just like that. And so the battery is kind of floating here on a magnet. There's no springs or anything like that. This is an authentic Sony VTC4 battery and it's just floating on the little on a little magnetic field in there. Magnets, right? How do they work? So when you take your battery out, there's a magnet that's stuck to the bottom of it. This is part of your switch. You stick this little piece there's one side with a magnet exposed and one side that's a contact. You stick the magnet exposed side to the negative connection on your battery. And then that, in turn, will go on the switch. And this is your switch right here. It's engraved on the bottom. That's your contact. It acts as a spring because it's negatively magnetized. They can't stick together. They're pressing against each other. And then when you press them together, and it's touching your atomizer, boom, that's when you fire it. When you take your switch and your magnet out, all you're left with is an incredibly light, hollow aluminum tube. And you can, I was wondering why they have these sort of, uh, you know, oh, mine's not, oh, mine has a flaw. Oh, that makes me so happy for some reason. So it has these, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna try to be that guy. Let's try to do that. Let's try to be that guy. I'm gonna zoom in and you're gonna see. Let's just pick a spot. Can you see these right here? These little cutouts? That's so you can see where you, that your switch is centered. And if I keep rotating mine, oh, one of them's filled in black. It didn't get machined out all the way. And I like that. To me, <laughs> that's cool. Um, I'm not gonna judge it too harshly because these mods are only a hundred bucks. <laughs> They're only a hundred bucks. Uh, that's it. One hundred dollars will get you a tugboat mod. And the way that it goes back together is you just drop your switch in here with the engraved side down, magnet side up. Drops in. <laughs> Eventually, uh, you have to kind of uh, get it... Uh, get it centered there but now it dropped all the way down you can see it you can see the switch right there it dropped all the way down then you take your battery with the magnet on the magnet magnet on the bottom of the battery and drop that in oh and it bounces it just bounces just like that then you can take your top cap screw it all together and it's done and that's it and you put your atomizer whatever atomizer you're using I'm using a green tugboat version 1.5 this is the one with the copper center post I think that just looks so boss on there the black and the green and the black ah, it just looks cool and it's super super light it's really easy it's really easy to use it's just it's light and it's got a nice little throw on the button. There's no locking feature because it sits flush like that, but it's been hitting well. Uh, this is a 0 0.18 ohm dual coil 24 gauge Canthal on here. The performance has been, uh, has been fantastic. It has been fantastic. I am uh, I'm kind of becoming a big fan of that tugboat. What I would like to see, and this is just me, I like the aluminum body, okay? It's not entirely objectionable. It makes for a really light mod. I would like to see a stronger magnet in there. Eh, maybe a bit of a stronger magnet. You could actually stand to make this tube somehow a little bit shorter so that the throw isn't as long. Uh, 
Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's. The, maybe they chose. Maybe they did this for a reason. Like I said, I'm not a mod maker. I'm just trying to think of ways you can get rid of that slight battery rattle in there. Maybe diameterically, but then you wouldn't be able to fit all sorts of batteries in there. So far, every 18650 I've used in here has worked. Uh, those vamped cells that are a little bit wider. They work, the MXJOs work, and the Sony VTC4s work uh, just good, but you get that, ugh, you get that kind of slight rattle happening. Um, I would also like to see it in stainless steel. I don't know why, I just think it would be cool in stainless steel, and I would love it if it matched, uh, if it matched this, like if I had just a black drip tip and this was the same matchy matchy green color, fuck, that would be cool. But for a hundred bucks, it's been a fantastic mech mod. And that's for an authentic mech mod. I mean, it's not its not a clone. And I know that there's going to be clones of it. There already probably is clones of it, uh, of at least the 4.9. Maybe this is technically a clone of the 4.9. I don't know. I don't know how this works. All I know is that I bought it. It came in a box that said Flawless Vape Shop Tugboat. It has the Tugboat logo. has the American flag. And it's engraved on the bottom. And it's been... Uh, it's been a great mech mod, and this is what I want to see in mech mods. I want to see simple to use mech mods that work well and are reasonably priced. Is that is that too much to ask? This is one of those. So moving forward into more first impressions, let's talk about this Provery version 3 a little bit. Got a black Provery version 3 currently rocking it with the K-Fun version 4, and in case you're wondering, all of your original K-Fun aftermarket parts, uh, they work on the K-Fun version 4. This is a different top cap I got, I believe, from RJ Vapes. This is a Vulcan drip tip, and it just looks uh, it just looks super cool on there. I think it looks great. So the Pro Vary in 18650 mode with this K-Fun is long. It's a bit of a long device, and it's because you have battery area, then you have electronics area, and then you have this little area where it connects. This does have the P3 in there, which the KFUN version 4 does have. I just don't have it set up like that because I've been swapping the top on this, you know, to a couple different tanks and atomizers and what have you. But even just comparing it, this is how long the Provary version 3 is in 18650 mode. That's the tugboat. In 18650 mode with an RDA so wow size difference uh, I go from using these little mech mods and RDAs to grabbing a giant uh, oops sorry my laptop turned off to using this kind of a it feels like a baton it just feels so large KFUN version 4 has been uh, continuing to perform and impress me. I've done two builds on this since the video, and I finally found one that is great. This is 2.8 ohms. Oh, 2.8 ohms. So high. So high. I did 26 gauge Canthal. I did uh, 12 wraps. 12 wraps? Oh, 12 wraps of 26 gauge Canthal? I think that's what I did on here came out to 2.8 ohms I'm currently rocking it at about 6 volts um, and it's just traditional high voltage vaping I've been trying to get a variety of ohms to use on this Pro Vary to see how well it does. It doesn't fire an Aspire Atlantis tank. It doesn't seem to fire below an ohm, which, oh God, it's going to be 2015. If they can update this Provary firmware to actually work with something that is sub-ohm, then, then they might be caught up to 2013. Um, as it stands, it won't fire anything super low, and even it won't even fire anything super high. If I try to turn my wattage up, uh, yes, I'm going to turn my wattage up. I'm going to turn my wattage up to like 13.6 watts. And even if I have a 2.8 ohm coil and I turn my wattage up to 
watts. Uh, this menu is slow. I need to speed it up. I had it set on slow so that I could learn it. it it'll fire. And it tastes great and it feels great. And it's firing at a little over 6 volts now. It gives me a warning. Can you see this warning? There's this little... Uh, I don't know why I'm going to attempt to do this again. But there's a little warning that happens. You see that ohm symbol flashing to an exclamation point? That's basically saying, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And I'm kind of going, why? I want to do that. That's why I want to go to there. That's what I want to do. I want to rock this 2.8 ohm coil at 6 volts. But you're telling me that it's bad. even though it feels so right. I feel like the Pro Vary version 3, so far in my experiences, is a very, very nice mod. I think they tried to make it too smart for its own good. Um, you can rate your setup on it. You can go to the menu, I believe, Oops, no, on selected. Why am I turning it off? It's got a menu, which I feel like is a step backwards. But that's just me. Um, you can rate it. So it'll give you an overall rating of how well your atomizer and your battery and your mod are all working together. 50% battery life. Moving forward, Mr. Provery, 2.8 ohms. Yes, I know that. Thank you. Let's move forward. Uh, f poor. Right now I have a 45 IQ rating. My Pro Vary is rating my vaping as a poor setup. 2.8 ohms at 6 volts is a poor setup. Poor. Who are you, Pro Vary 3, to tell me that the way I vape is poor? Additionally, for this expensive of a mod, um, the threads should not sound like that at all. That's unacceptable to me, that the threads sound like that. That is unacceptable to me. I'm going to spend a lot more time with this Pro Vary, and I know there's a couple people out there, Mr. PB, Mr. Phil Bassardo, who've already done a video for the Pro Vary. I think Matt, Mr. Matt Suck My Mod, also already did a video for the Pro Vary. I'm going to spend a lot more time with this before I feel comfortable speaking to it, but... I have one and I'm using it and I'm going to put it through its paces and obviously yes I will report back with a full video on uh, on how it works out for me. Thanks Proberry. So moving forward from the Proberry version 3 who's judging me. I can just see it judging me. It's saying your vaping rating is poor right now. I'm going to pour myself some more beer, and we're going to talk about an atomizer. So this atomizer I got, and I think people already have a video for this too. It's called the Eric, A-I-R-E-K, Competition RDA. comes in this little sort of machined aluminum, pardon me, egg, I guess. It's a little egg thing. Uh, I built it up the other night with just some simple dual coils on here. Ooh, sorry, I almost punched my microphone. Uh, some simple dual coils on here. Uh, the performance has been good. I mean, the performance has been great. Um, this top cap is a little bit crazy. Um, I actually like this top cap, believe it or not, which is a strange thing to say. Let me get out my, my fancy vape rag here which is a strange thing to say considering what I said about the dark horse, but in the vaping world, there is such a thing as too much airflow. Thankfully, I think this RDA looks cool and I can dial in the airflow. Do you see these holes up here? There's three holes. You can open these holes all the way up. Just, uh, whoops, well, now it's not lined up. You can open the queue, that's a text message sound. You can open these holes. Holy crap. 
all the way up. You could build a insane sort of uh, parallel sleeper coil in there, run it low, and just have the most airflow that I've experienced uh, in a rebuildable atomizer. Huge air. It's like breathing. It's just like it's like if you had nothing in front of your mouth and you just went. That's what it feels like. It's just air. Obviously, the build I have on here is not designed to utilize that open of an airflow. So what I do is I take it down to one hole, and then I just slightly cut that airflow off. And now, for the way that I vape, is perfect. I get much better flavor. I get much better vapor, actually, um, because I don't have a crazy coil build in here. I'm not taking advantage of those full airflow slots. Someone, and here's, a, here's some homework for you. Someone give me a build to do. Give me a build that will fully take advantage of this atomizer. I don't want to repeat like the fucking Dark Horse RDA. Give me a build that I should put in this. Anything. It can be anything, and I will try to build it to take full, full advantage of this obscene amount of airflow. Because as it stands, I've never wanted this much airflow, but apparently people do. So give me a build. I will put it in here, and I will rock this at full airflow, open, and uh, I'll see how it goes. I'll see if it's enjoyable, uh, and most of all, just to see clouds, bro. I feel like this wattage is way too low for this build right now. Much better, much better. So yeah, obviously, I'm gonna spend some more time with this fancy little Eric, Eric competition RDA. Projectile machined in the Philippines, projectile DPS number 76. I want to spend more time with this, and if you give me a build to put in here, I will put it in here, and I want to take full advantage of that stupidly huge airflow in there. The way that I vape isn't like competition level vaping. This is it right here. It's nice. It's warm. I get some good vapor. I get some really nice flavor. That's how I want to vape. But... I do want to take advantage of this airflow. So give me a build. I'll put it in there. I'll get juice on my hands. And we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to take full advantage of that silly, silly, lots, so much airflow, bro. Airflow, bro. Airflow. So after the first impressions, I'm guessing this is about 40 minutes long. Let's do, uh, just for the fun of it, because I have it out, we're going to do some retro vaping. All right, we're going to wrap this vlog up with some retro vaping. Been getting in touch with my roots, and I think that's important to remember where you came from and remember why you started vaping. And as I explained last week, that's what toot life, that's what the toot life means to me. I'm hoping, I'm hoping with all of my hope that this atomizer will still work. So once upon a time, we had atomizers, and they were these dinky little things. And... We used to drip. We called it direct dripping. That's what we called it, direct dripping. And uh, these. You see this little atomizer right here? If I can stop shaking. It's called the HH357 atomizer. And you can go back into my, uh, into my YouTube uh, world. And you can see my reviews of the HH357. I believe I did a review for one at, oh, it's going to work. It's going to work gonna rock this on the ambassador so this is very similar <clears throat> to a setup that I had a, a long long time ago pardon the squeaky drawer I'm gonna get a drip tip what's a, what's gonna be a good drip tip to use you think something uh, narrow bore oh look at that that looks cool oh yeah 
boss, dude. I feel like I'm in a time machine right now looking at this. Look at that. Just a drip tip and an atomizer. And this is the way, this is the way you vaped. Uh, this is before, this is during Cardo tanks. Uh, when I got my first HH357 atomizer, I don't think I had tried a Cardo tank yet. I went from, my progression went from the Smoke 51 Cardomizers to 510 atomizers with cartridges to direct dripping on a 510 atomizer. Um, what? What do I want to vape? What do I want to vape? What about this? You see this? Is this Namber Juice in a friggin' glass bottle? Holy shit! That's awesome! Um, it's actually not, we, we don't sell in, uh, in glass bottles, but I put my juice sometimes into glass bottles because I think it looks fancy. Um, this is actually a combination of Mass Teller Mint and Mango Jams, and uh, it's just a good juice. I, I like to mix mix my juices up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drip exactly three drops of juice in here. One, two, three, that's it, that is it. Because you can see how big the chamber is on this. It's a tiny little thing. This is, this is a dripping atomizer and still still to this day when people ask about dripping my mind instantly goes to these old school dripping atomizers we would rock them on mechanical mods this is a 1.5 ohm hh 357 510 atomizer uh, cisco avid vapor i believe still sells these let's try it and i'm getting no airflow because today's mods aren't designed for airflow. Um, I'm gonna need a different mod. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Let's try the Ramble. Do I have an 18650 available to me right now? I don't, I don't, don't, don't. I wonder, I don't even, I don't even know if this is gonna work. It's driving me crazy. Let's try the Ramble. And the only reason I grabbed the Ramble mech mod is because it has those slots on the top that I feel like could give me some airflow. Because these atomizers got their airflow from the bottom. Okay. That's exactly, that's exactly. Thank you, Ramble, for coming through, coming through with the airflow. Oh, that's great. This is going to be great. I can already tell how great this is going to be. So, we've switched it over. We got the HH357 currently on the 18650 Ramble mod. Let's give it a toot. Yes. That. It has this like gurgly sensation to it. It has like this this gurgling that happens when you take a drag on it. I'm gonna put two, exactly two more drops. There was this sort of delicate balance of dripping and airflow and leaking. And if I drip some juice in here and I just let this sit, it'll leak out the bottom. It just will. And it'll fill up in there with juice and you have to blow your atomizers out. This used to be a daily routine of blowing your atomizers out. In fact, there was one company, I can't remember the name of the company. I just can't. I can't remember the name of the company, but they built specifically made little atomizer drying stations. So you could blow them out and you could flip them upside down and the juice would drain out of them onto like a, a little spongy kind of mat. And they went in upside down and they drained out. This was, a, this was a thing. People purchased this because they were blowing out their atomizers every night. Look at that performance. Just look at it. Clouds, bro. Do you see these these clouds happening? Intense, intense cloudage action is happening. God, I want to put this on something else. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put this on... I'm going to put this on the iStick, which is a thing. It exists. 
I'm using the Ego Connector. That is old school. Mm, get some airflow. Get some airflow off the eye stick. Let's, uh, you know that if you press this three times, you can switch it between wattage and voltage mode. So we're going to keep it in voltage mode. We're going to turn this to 4.9 volts. Sure, why not? There you go. Here we go. Let's hope for some bigger clouds. Oh, you can see it leaking. You can see it leaking out the bottom. You can't. You can't see it, but it is. It's leaking out the bottom. Uh, then I got juice in my mouth. And then I got juice in my mouth. Oh, this is what we used to have to deal with. You vapors now. You don't know how good you have it. Mm. Much better. Getting much better performance. Much better performance. This was like the pinnacle. I vaped on nothing but HH357 atomizers for a while. I got something like with an ego connection. I put a drip shield on it, which maybe we'll talk about drip shields in the future. And I just dripped a couple drops, took a couple toots, and that is how I vaped with 18 milligram juice. When it came out, pardon me, I'm sorry, Sheik. When it came out, again, sorry. When it came out, Robin, when it came out, this was like uh, the, the Rolls Royce of atomizers. I mean, people loved them. I loved them. They were high performance atomizers. This is before any rebuilding. This is right when Cardo tanks started coming out and people were still direct dripping and they wanted a little bit more performance. Um, if I could go back in time and give myself an eye stick within like an Aspire Nautilus Mini, um, it would have blown my mind because we had nothing back then that performed anything as good as an eye stick with a Nautilus Mini. We had mech mods with 1.5 ohm HH357 atomizers, and I can't believe, I can't believe this one still works. I think I got this at Vape Bash 2, because that's when Cisco released the uh, amp tank, and it was designed to be a tank for HH357 atomizers. I'm not going to lie, the, the flavor that I'm getting off of this is uh, is true and pure. Uh, it tastes wonderful. Oh, good God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm unbelievable this is unbelievable i can't believe i can't believe this still works first of all and i can't believe that it tastes so good the clouds are nothing to write home about but if you want flavor if you just want pure sort of concentrated flavor into your face hole i think you can still buy hh357 atomizers if you can, just go buy one. Put it on your iStick, put it on your MVP version two, put it on your MVP version three, put it on something and just uh, enjoy the flavor. Do you feel, hear the gurgle? That's the gurgle, that's the HH357 gurgle and it just happens. And I got juice in my mouth, and I don't care. It was a very delicate balance of voltage and ohms and drops. Like if you put three drops instead of two drops in there, you would get juice in your mouth. But if you put two drops, oh, you'd get like four solid flavorful toots. And then it would get dry, and you'd have to drip two more drops in there. And it was this balance. And like I said before, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just making it up as we went along. So it's like... Oh, this is how you have to use the HH. You just drip two drops and you take four toots and you drip two drops and you take four toots and that's it. That's how it works. There wasn't anybody trying to be like, well, what if I put four drops and I rocked it at six volts instead of 4.8 volts? You know, it, it just is what it is. And like I said, everybody was just making it up as they went along. We were just going with the flow of new technology and that's still happening to this day. It's, it's crazy to see 
these new atomizers like the Kennedy atomizer that comes out where it's like, no, no, the airflow comes from the bottom. And everybody goes, well, the airflow comes from the bottom. There's no holes in the side. That's new and innovative. And, and now we're going to vape with this. And, you know, these regulated box mods where it's like, wow, we can get 150 watts instead of using a mech mod. I can still build low and we can do this. We're still just making it up as we go along. We're all, we're all part of this. And uh, that's it. That's what I got. It's the retro vaping segment. I don't have any time for viewer mail. 40, this is a 42, 44, 50 minute long video. Oh, we're going to cut it off right now. We're going to cut it off right now. But thank you for bearing with me while we're going through these changes sort of together. Um, I would appreciate maybe just a little bit of privacy. Uh, but things are going to be the same as well as different at the same time. Um, this is the vlog on Thursday. This is what you just watched. Of course, we're going to stick with the normal uh, Monday double feature Thursday vlogs. I love doing it, and uh, I'm going to continue to keep doing it. That's what I got for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I'm going to grab my Hexome. I'm going to grab my Competition RDA. And I'm just going to enjoy some vapor here tonight. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping.